Hi, my name is Susan Lohman and I'm the Crochet Architect. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I have a special new technique called Spike Single Crochet Mosaic Crochet. Now you might think it's the same as my previous video on this, but this one has a nice little twist to it. So stay tuned and I'll teach you how. Okay, I've got some samples to show you here. This is my Hearts and Love Mosaic Crochet Scarf, and this is also in the Spike Single Crochet Mosaic Crochet Technique. But all of the rows here are right side. This is the right side of every stitch on this side. And on the opposite side, it's the wrong side of each of the rows and each of these stitches. And you can see that it's exactly the same on the front and the back. You've got the dark heart with the light background, and the dark heart with the light background on both sides. So this is one way of doing spike single crochet, mosaic crochet. And I've got another way to show you today and teach you. And this was introduced to me by one of my YouTube viewers named Stephanie. And I thank her for asking me about this because this is really, really cool. As you can see, You've got predominantly light side on this side of this scarf. And then on the other side, it's predominantly dark. And it's a really cool technique. It's still the same stitches used, but you're alternating right side and wrong side rows to get this light side and dark side effect. So I've got a couple of scarves that I made. I made this one and this one, and I did two different fringe options on there. So if you're interested in this pattern, you can see the link in the video description below. And then I kind of went crazy and made some hot pads too. And they each have, I'll show you these two first, they each have a light side and a dark side as well. And then I thought Valentine's Day is coming up, so I did some Valentine ones with light sides and dark sides. So you can have fun with those. And let me show you how to do this technique. Okay, I have two different swatches to show you, and we're going to go through each way of doing it, whether you begin and end every row or you carry your yarn across. They end up looking the same. You've got your light side and you've got your dark side. So let's go ahead and start with the easier one with having your tails on the ends. So as you can see, we have the back side of our gray stitches and the front side of our pink stitches. And we ended with the pink row, so we're going to need a gray row and we're going to work the gray row on this side. So we're going to start with our gray, and we will do a slip knot and put it on the hook. This is how I like to start my rows. And you might see this listed as different ways in different patterns. You can call this a standing single crochet, or you can say join with a single crochet, but it's the same thing. You'll start with a slip knot on your hook. Now remember I said the single crochets are all worked in the back loop. So we're going to start our first stitch in the back loop of this stitch, and we're going to start with a single crochet. And we will look at our pattern and see what we need next. We need two more single crochets, and those will be in the back loop. So one here and one here. And leaving the front loop, that's what gives us all this texture and the light side and the dark side. Now we are going to work another, uh, a spike single crochet. So the spike single crochets are worked in both loops, and we don't work them up here, we work them down here. So this was, this is the front loop that was the back loop. We're going to insert our hook below that and look on the back and make sure that we're going under that back loop. Because we don't want our hook to come out 
above it here, we want it to come out below it. So we're going in both loops. So we'll pull up our loop, but on a spike single crochet, we pull it up taller to the height of our working row. And we'll finish off our stitch. And we want to make sure that these legs of that spike single crochet are not crossed. Sometimes they want to cross like this, but we want them nice and straight. So the next stitches we're going to do is some more single crochets. Those will be back loop. So we're going to have three back loop single crochets. And then we're going to have another spike single crochet. So we we'll put it, put our hook in under that loop, one row below, and make sure that our hook comes out underneath that back loop. Pull up a nice tall loop and finish our stitch. Now see how this is wanting to go over the other? You just want to gently coax those into place. That doesn't always happen, but it does sometimes. So we're going to finish our row with three back loop single crochets. And here's our last one, worked in that first stitch. And we can go ahead and finish off this row. Now I usually leave a little bit longer tail than these. I just shortened those for the sake of the video. And here's this row. Now our next row will be in the pink and we want to turn our work because this is the wrong side of those stitches. So every row we're turning our work to the other side. All these pink stitches will be facing the same side of our work and all the gray stitches will be facing the other side of the work. So we'll go ahead and join our pink with a single crochet in the back loop. Now you can do two different ways of joining depending on the pattern. I'll show you both ways. Here's the single crochet in the back loop. Notice I started with my slip knot on the hook. Okay, that's one way to start. You can also start a row with a spike single crochet. So instead of working in that back loop, you're just going to insert your hook into that stitch in the row below, making sure you go under that back loop and pull up a spike single crochet, a nice tall stitch. So we'll start and end this row like this. And then we're going to work a number of single crochet. Let me take a look at the pattern here. Okay, we're going to go actually across to here for our single crochet, our spike single crochets. And we're going to have three back loop single crochets and then we're going to have a spike single crochet. So it's the same way whether you're working a right side row or a wrong side row. You go under both loops, pull up a nice tall loop, and finish your stitch, making sure these legs are not crossed. And we have a back loop single crochet and another spike single crochet. Okay. Then we're going to have three back loop single crochets. There's two, and here's three. And then I'm going, ahead and going to go ahead and finish off this row with a spike single crochet, going under both loops, the front loop and the back loop, pulling it up nice and tall and finishing it off. Okay, this is how you will work if you are beginning and ending your rows and leaving long tails for fringe or covering with a double border. You'll have, you'll notice that I have these spike single crochets here. So that changes the look of it a little bit, but here's the front and here's the back. If I pull up a little bit more here you can see the pattern a little bit more on the back. If you're enjoying this video and learning a new technique, please check out my website. I have over 70 fun and exciting crochet patterns in a variety of different crochet techniques.
A lot of people say, buy me a cup of coffee, but I don't drink coffee. By purchasing a pattern, you'd be helping to support my YouTube channel. Thank you to all of you who can. Now, let's get back to the teaching part of the video. Okay, here's the other swatch with the same technique, but a little bit different because we're carrying our yarn across so that we can use it again instead of cutting it at the end of every row. So we're ready for a green row, and this is the wrong side of the green and the right side of the blue, so we need to work our green row on the back. So instead of starting with a slip knot on our hook, we're going to insert our hook in the back loop and pull up a loop of the green, and then we're going to chain one. And now we're ready to do our first stitch. And notice I worked over this blue strand. That's how we're carrying the yarn. So we're going to do our first single crochet in the back loop. Whoops, there we go. And then we're going to look at our pattern again, and we're going to see that we're going to need a spike single crochet over here. So we have two more back loop single crochets, and I am carrying my yarn across the yarn of the opposite color. We want to carry it across so it'll be over here when we need it for our next row of that color. We work over it. So we're ready to do our spike single crochet, and we're not working up here, we're working down here under that front loop and making sure we go under our back loop as well. So we're still doing the stitches the same way. We pull up that nice tall loop, and then we're ready for some back loop single crochets. Now you can do several of these in one or in a row in succession, or you can just do one here and there. It's still worked around the carried yarn. It's not as secure as it is under the single crochets. So if you want to change a mo overlay mosaic crochet pattern and use this spike stitch, then you can do that. Okay, we need another spike single crochet here, so we want to go under both loops and pull up our loop nice and tall and finish our spike single crochet. And then we have three more back loop single crochets to finish our row. And you notice that I have to rotate my piece a little bit more because we're looking at the back side of our stitches, so that back loop is hiding on the other side. We have to make sure that we go in the right one. Okay, we're at the end of the row, so now what do we do? We're not going to cut the yarn. We're going to pull up this loop nice and big. We're going to grab our skein of yarn or our little ball and pass it through from the back of the loop to the front of the loop and adjust it here. I like to make sure this these legs aren't too short or too long and just secure it like that. And then when we start our next row, before we start it, we're going to hold here and tug this just a little bit to adjust the carried yarn so it's not too tight or too loose. And we can pull on here a little bit as well. So now we're ready for our blue row. So we'll do the same thing. We'll turn to the other side because all the blue stitches are worked on this side and all the green stitches are worked on that side. So we will insert our hook in. Actually, this is starting with a spike single crochet but we need to pull our yarn up to the working row. So we will insert our hook. We can go ahead and go in the back loop again and pull up our blue yarn and chain one. And notice we're still working over our carried yarn, but we haven't made our first stitch. So we're going to insert our hook in the front loop here and go to the back and make double sure that we're going under that back loop, which is hiding right down here. 
So we will work our spike single crochet at the beginning because that's how I made this swatch. I have a line of spike single crochet at the beginning and end. And then that's our first stitch. And then let's look at our pattern and we have spike single crochets over here. So we need three single crochets in the back loop. So we rotate our piece a little bit, insert our hook in that back loop and do our single crochets. So you'll notice that this is the same way as we were doing the rows that we were finishing off, but we're carrying our yarn across so we don't need to finish off. So now we're ready for a spike single crochet and we'll go right down here and make sure we're going under the back loop to pull up that loop nice and tall. You can adjust this loop as long as it's on the hook. So it takes a little bit of practice to get the right height that you want and get those legs in order. And then I, we have a back loop single crochet and then another spike single crochet. So we want to make sure we're going under both loops when we do our spike single crochets and just the back loops when we do our single crochets. So we'll finish our row with three back loop single crochets and then our last stitch will be a spike single crochet. So we'll find where we insert our hook here and we'll go to the back and make sure that we're under that back loop. And we are. We'll pull up our loop and do that last spike single crochet. And then we're going to finish off the same way that we did our green row. We're going to pull up a nice big loop with our blue yarn and pass our ball through from the back to the front of that loop and adjust our loop. We can adjust the legs or the height of that spike single crochet at the same time. So we can hang on here and adjust that loop. And now it's secure and it's ready to be carried across on the next row. But before we do the green row, we have to make sure that we hold on here and adjust it and adjust it like this so that we know it's, it's got the right amount of yarn under there that's carried. So that's how to do the spike single crochet mosaic crochet, whether you're doing the continuous or you're finishing off at the end of each row. This is the technique for the hot pads and this is the technique for the scarf with the fringe on the ends. I hope you've enjoyed this video on this fascinating technique of spike single crochet with a light side and a dark side. I really like it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and happy mosaic crocheting to all of you. One take for the first part. Ten takes for this part. Come on, Ed.